Good morning, good morning, good morning. Bueno, si es mi gente. Yo, yo, welcome to Daily Discipline number 630, primarily in a row. My name's Rob Hoback. Happy that you're here. Honor and humble that you keep coming back like for reals. Hey, before we go any further, let's talk about the number, right? 630. Uh, I don't have anything special about that number. I just need to call out that the last couple days I said one number when it was actually a number. I was one behind. So yesterday when I said it was 628, it was actually 629. So my apologies. These things happen. When you do something 630 days in a row, every once in a while, you might lose a day. Um, nonetheless, it's a hump day. It's July the 8th, 2020. Hump day! That's for you at Barb. Hope you're well. Um, and it's a work day. I've already been on one conference call. I got a lot to do. I'm sure you do too. So let's do it. First things first, still the real. You know what else I am? This is not going to be a shocker to anybody. I'm forgetful. I forget things all the time. I tell people all the time that one of my biggest stressors in my life is searching for things that I'm relatively certain of where I left them. And it could be one of a handful of things. One of my kids could have decided that they wanted to use my stuff and moved it someplace else. Um, so there's three options right there, or I could have just misplaced it and not remember, but I am forgetful, right? The reason I bring this up today is that I was thinking this morning, um, actually yesterday, I'm like, I don't know why I, I go through these cycles where things at work happen. And if you've ever worked for a corporation, you understand, like when times get tough and times are tough for almost everybody right now, people overreact, they do dumb things, you know, they drop things and like, Whoa, what, what are we doing here? And so I, I found myself in a situation like that last week, got sideways, got upset, um, just mad. Right. And then I, yesterday, as I was, um, I think I was watering the grass last night, had the, the, the radio on and Demi Lovato started talking to me, sing that I love me song. And that line, I'm a 10 out of 10, even when I forget, right? She's singing to herself. She's like, look, you allow these other people inside your head. Nobody comes to your castle without your permission. You allow these other voices in your head. And then, excuse me, all of a sudden you start believing them. Like, wait a minute, the, the track record doesn't suggest that what, I, no, I'm a 10 out of 10, even where I forget. And so are you. Don't forget, right? So let's move on to our real talk. Do you remember this lady? Kelly Lafler, right? Um, first time I remember hearing about her was a couple months ago when the uh, insider trading allegations came out against three senators, Jim Inhofe here in um, Oklahoma, Kelly Lafler down in, in Georgia. And she's a junior senator. She's not even been like fully. She took over one where a guy was retiring or died or something. Hell, I don't know. Anyway, um, and so, you know, I came out that she had, she was part of a uh, briefing where they talked about, you know, the effects of the, the COVID, you know, was going to have on the economy. And then all of a sudden, like her portfolio changed dramatically and she shed a bunch of stocks that, you know, were going to be impacted negatively by the, the pandemic and bought a bunch that, that, that stood to gain. And so, uh, look, I don't know all the, all I know is that they, they immediately, not immediately, the, the first pass, they're like, yeah, that, that Richard Burger guy out there, I think he's North Carolina, like there's something going on there, right? So he's probably in trouble. Laffler, she's kind of in the middle um, because there's some people like, oh, she didn't do anything wrong. Well, her husband is the owner of a company that owns the New York Stock Exchange, right? If some, like, it, it's just hard to look at that. It looks like a smoking gun from here, right? Nonetheless, that's the first time I remember hearing about her. Um, and I didn't really, it's just like, all right, whatever, right? It's moving on. I was more interested in Inhofe and this Burr guy because my mom's maiden name is Burr, right? So nonetheless, didn't think much about it. You know, just been busy. Then all of a sudden, you know, she's all over TV yesterday. I'm like, who is that lady? Why does she look familiar? And so it wasn't until late last night, I put the two things together. I'm like, oh, it's the same lady. It's the same lady that was accused of insider trading that is now mouthing off about uh, Black Lives Matters. And she's part owner of a WNBA team in Atlanta. And the entire WNBA is like, get her out of here now. And if you don't read those divisive remarks you made, you're like, Oof. now here's the best part. So this morning I have to do a little research. I'm like, this lady is unreal, right? And so I did a little research and got some notes for you. I think you're gonna find this interesting. Number one, she was born in central Illinois, in Bloomington, Illinois, so my same birthplace as me, um, November 1970. So I showed up a month before she did. Uh, she graduated, she grew up in Olympia, Stanford. Is it Stanford? Um, apparently, you know, hard work and family, Midwestern values, you know, went to the University of Illinois, graduated. She then, her family, you know, have land, right? Farming land. And so she was, she inherited some of that as part of being a part of that family. She then mortgaged that 
uh, to then pay for her education. Again, her choice, you know, uh, it would appear as though she worked hard to put herself in a position where in 2002, she took a job um, with a company and, you know, that was owned by the guy that is now her husband. And two years later, she married him. Um, and so, you know, people talk about how rich she is. I haven't been able to find how rich she was before marrying uh, her current husband. But needless to say, that guy's got lots and lots of money, right? And so um, she married extremely well. There's nothing wrong with that, right? However, comma, if you hear the way that some of the, if you read some of the things that she says, it's just very divisive. And it's like, yeah, I don't know that those are Midwestern values. I think those are elitist values that a lot of times people get when they become wealthy, right? Even if they just happen to marry somebody who had a lot of money and then they worked hard and they, they, they were able to leverage that, make a lot of money on their own, right? Um, but anyway, this is the, the, there was, I was reading an article about her that her husband owns the New York Stock Exchange and they came, the, the, the Republican Party came to her and said, hey, we want you to fill this Senate seat. And the reason we want you to fill the Senate seat is because we're losing professional women voters. They're, they're flocking to other, you know, uh, the other parties that are more friendly to females, right? So anyway, they put her in place. And now I'm like, I don't, I don't know if this is working out too well for you. I really don't, right? Because I'm pretty certain that this wasn't what you were wanting. You, were wanting, you know, weren't wanting to put her in place. And then within 90 days, she's accused of insider trading. And then she comes out and just starts saying, like, it's just not good. Not a good look. And um, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, some of that gets on. She, she leverages that, you know, I grew up in Central Illinois. I worked hard. That's where I got these values. Like, I don't think so. I'm from Central Illinois. I work hard and I and I didn't get to a point like, oh, yeah, I did this all by myself, which she did not. None of us ever do. And therefore, I am better than other people because they haven't accomplished as much as I have. Ugh, no offense. So you can stay in the Snickers hole. We let Inhofe out, but uh, you're going to stay in there. All right, let's do our thank yous and we're done for the day. Uh, God has been good to us in the good times and the bad. No denying that. I'm thankful for Demi, Demi Lovato, who reminded me that I'm a 10 out of 10 even when I forget. I'm thankful for Sam, Eddie, and Jack. We had a great time last night. Um, just, you know, we just, it was a rough day. I was a little crabby, and my head, my kids helped me get out of a bad mood. Um, I'm thankful for the Hillbilly Oasis. It's where we were having our fun at. We went out and got in the pool and had fun. Um, I'm thankful for access to information. It was very easy for me to sit down and start researching all this stuff. And this, that was like 20 minutes, right? Um, I'm thankful for the truth, right? Because we can, like, look, people can spin uh news any way they want to with the access of information you're able to find the truth if you look hard enough thankful for the snickers hole because i keep getting sending people there right and i'm thankful for all these views i get from india it's just crazy right like just thank you india i appreciate it. i don't know i don't know what the attraction to me is but i like you too all right i'm thankful for today because today is a great opportunity for us to change everything around we just have to work hard and i'm thankful for whatever's next with that i'm done hands up peace out we're better together Appreciate you stopping by on a hump day. Hope day. That's for you, Aunt Barb. We'll be back tomorrow on a thankful Thursday. We'll see you then. Hashtag real talk. Deuces. Love you guys. Bye.